right, welcome everyone. It's really a great pleasure to have Philippe Yuan to present the work of Archie Union, his practice with us this evening. At a time of increased polarization across all spheres, we always enjoy here in this auditorium the opportunity to hear and learn about ways to bring things together. Whether it is around the intersections of discourse and practice, the thinking across scales and disciplines of the built environment, the design of intersections between the pragmatic and the visionary, the hybridizing between the urban and the rural, between nature and culture, the digital and the analog, or whether it is simply about creating new relationships between drawing, making, and building to open up new modes of research and practice, which move beyond questions of criticality and engagement. All of those investigations are ones we seek here at the school without ever finding simple or singular answers, but rather by looking at inspiring models and emerging practices. And so tonight, I'm especially excited to have Philip here with us, since I believe his work through Archie Union is uniquely contributing to moving beyond these kinds of false choices we often seem to be grappling with. Based out of his hometown of Shanghai and with a strong commitment to both research and to building in the world, Archie Union is offering a new model of practice that is at once deeply embedded within the issues of China's rapid urbanization and technological development while simultaneously resonating across the architectural sphere. Like many, I was first struck by Archie Union's work at the recent Chicago Architecture Biennale where their stunning in bamboo project was presented, one that Philip recently described as, quote, rural area prefab industrialization in the era of digital humanities. <laughs> bringing together a strong commitment to local materials and building knowledge with computation and digital fabrication. The project weaves vernacular sensibility and traditional typology with cutting edge technology, a certain contemporary formal fluidity and programmatic flexibility. Built on the traces of two traditional courtyard houses, In Bamboo is a community center whose sole purpose, it seems, is to invite the rural community of Daoming, a Chinese metropolis of Chengdu, to think about its future through architecture. This thinking across and moving beyond, it extends with Archie Union to the question of scale. The practice is as comfortable engaging with visionary master plans as it is designing exquisite installations. Their commitment to building allows them to bring together visionary aspirations with a keen pragmatic sense of dealing with budgets and local construction methods as well as expertise. Finally, Archie Union's collaborative spirit, also a sign of our time, has rendered the practice one of the most compelling to emerge out of China in recent years. A committed academic, Philip received his PhD from Tongji University where he is currently part of the faculty, teaching but also coordinating the Digital Design Research Center and continuing to kind of practice through research and research as a form of practice. Philip is also the co-founder of the Digital Architectural Design Association of the Architectural Society of China and is the organizing, organizer of Digital Future, Shanghai's joint summer school program where Philip has been strongly promoting digital design and fabrication already since 2010. His writings have appeared in a number of journals including AD, Architectura Viva, Detail, and T plus A. And his essay, Performative Tectonics, was published recently by Springer in the book Robotic Fabrication in Architecture, Art, and Design, which was published in 2014. His new project, quote, City of Breeze, will be published in the upcoming issue of AD. I went through a very long list of awards, and then I thought, you know, I'd just say that he's just been sort of the recipient of many awards, but I should note that among them is also awards for his teaching. So we're really uh, thrilled to have him this evening. Please welcome Philippe Juan. So thank you so much to the kind introduction from Dean Amal. It's a great honor for me to be invited here to make a speech in um, uh, GSAPP. I think uh, uh, you uh, play a leading role in the world, uh, especially in the last 20 years, 
because Columbia University, uh, especially from the, the, the early time of digital world to, uh, to, uh, to now, I think uh, still leading a, a pioneer uh, uh, knowledge and uh, architecture future in the world. So uh, uh, today it's a great honor for me to present my research and uh, some of my design works to you and uh, looking forward to make further discussion on uh, what you are doing and make further discussion on the future. So um, I'd like to talk about the topic today is matter matters. The pedagogical agenda right now is to expanding upon the design methodology developed to acquire an understanding of the uh, interwoven relationship between the visualization and the materialization. I'd like to attend this, uh, extend the subject matter to include the process of formation, simulation, optimization, fabrication, and even industrialization of the discipline of architecture. Perhaps most important of all, however, is the fact that the science itself is now able to offer insights to help us understand the cultural life in general. And that framework like new materialism can help us make much needed uh, connections among the discipline and also in the society. One such insight that matter can be seen as active is an insight that can help us to understand not only how matter itself behaves, but also how society itself operates. As such, the notion of the active matter has implementations beyond the strictly material, um, the, material of, uh, the material world of matter itself to embrace the whole of the society. Also from the scale of the nanotechnology to that of our cities, countries, and even the whole planet. The message, the message is clear, the behavior of the matter, especially the active role that it plays in its own formation can help us to understand the broader questions about how the world operates. In short, matter does matter. So this is an interesting structure performance simulation um, put forward uh, by Mike Xie, who is a comedian from uh, RMIT, uh, Australia. And he make a very interesting simulation by the hanging of one point and two points. So one point, the apple is the best, best form in the world. And the two points hanging, the best form is Catalina uh, arch. And also the, um, the simulation of the uh, Sangrenda Familia, the facade designed by uh, Gaudi, is also based on this kind of thinking methodology. So from this kind of simulation, we have we can understand what is the best form in the world. So in the lecture of Mike Xie, I put forward a question to him. If you're talking about the hanging, the apple is the best form, why we have the pear? It's also have a hanging, but it looks different to apple. So that is the question to the simulation, it's kind of technology. It, uh, are they, uh, this kind of new method will totally change the thinking process or replace the designers? So the question uh, Mike Shear gave to me is, not only the hanging point, but also the seed of the apple and the pear are different. And another force is growing as a nutlet in the middle of this apple up here. We also have another forces to change the apple and the pear growing differently. So I think the human and machine right now are collaboration with each other. It's just like the hanging point and also have a, a core, a, a seed inside the core of the, of the, of the uh, creatures. We produce a different formation process of nature. So to, tonight I would like to uh, put forward three topics uh, from a new materialism, uh, craft-driven materialization to human-machine association. The new materialism moves us beyond the discourse of representation to a discourse more we are about the material process and expressions. It is not that new materialism seeks to displace or dismiss the representational logic of the late 20th century, although it were redundant. Rather, it seeks to emphasize that after years of stressing the importance of representation, we need to redress the balance by paying great attention to process. Indeed, there are two discourse of representation of the process are not mutually ex exclusively. 
but the one invites the others. I will put forward, introduce several uh, of my projects and think about how the material reorganized process uh, engage into the design process. This is a cable car station we designed in uh, Qiandaohu, which is a beautiful screenery in the Yangzidao district. So the project is developed by a huge uh, develop developer, including um, uh, 20, 200 hectares tourism project on top of the mountain. They invite us to divine, design a, a, a cable car station, which is like a welcome center of the, the whole uh, screenery. So um, um, we are thinking about um, the new uh, landmarks, how can uh, embracing the new um, uh, travelers and also bring a different uh, uh, experience to the visitors. The original concept is coming to integrate the building with uh, nature and how this kind of building can grow in from the mountains and also it can enter into the rock race. I hope when you have a first glimpse of the local scenery, it could be, it should be uh, different to figure out where is the building and where is the nature. So that is follows Chinese philosophy. Man is the integral part of the nature. Well, how can we uh, manipulate the design process to realize the conceptual goals? Here is the formation process. We define the, an agent system that could represent the simulation process of how the rock tree of the mountains grows up. And the protocols represent the intelligent rules of how to predict the future, uh, the growing process of the rock tree to the beauty. So, uh, so the, the basic logic is coming from the local topography of the, uh, the mountains. So architecture is the landform uh, we're looking for, and the landform is the architecture. So this is the form finding process uh, from the prototype by the bottom up process to simulate how the building growing from the rock tree to expanding out to fit into different kind of functions of the buildings. So this is models we make. And here is the, the, the final models to represent uh, the process. But actually the process is not just a f final result. It's a growing process. How to integrate with the programs, with the geometry of the, the mountain. We have a very big cantilever to the, touching out to the cantilever to the, to the lake. So we have a beautiful screenery in front of the mountain, and also the cantilever make a shading space for the parking, and the people can come in outside and sitting outside as entrance of the, uh, of the, uh, the national park. So cantilever is, is 30 meters. It's very big, uh, uh, pushing out from the mountains. So it's just different floors, the plans, still in the design process is important. Uh, because different um, height uh, should be carefully uh, operate different uh, details in the design process. You also can find the reflection of the water and the integration of the local material. It's a kind of laminate bamboo. We use them as a facade to the, to the building uh, to make it very close to the local materials. And also we set up different system, including the structure system, most importantly, because it's a big cantilever. So it's a steel structure system anchoring to the, 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 uh, the nature. And also the structure system, uh, when we make the construction, it's a very complicated process for different kind of structure simulation and the optimization process. And after finish the building, you can see that when the cable car coming down from the, from the mountains, to the end, to the, to the, to the platform, which you can find the frame uh, of the buildings, can framing the beautiful screenery in front of you. It's just like standing in the nature and also uh, the, the frame is set up a certain distance from you to the nature. So this is part of its finish. You can see the building with the mountain, the building with the lake and with boat, the boating on the lake. So I would like to highlight the final um, uh, images. Here is the original concept of the design, is how to integrate the building with the nature. So actually, it's the logic of the form finding process 
is from the protocols, the prototype of the rockery, uh, and growing to the certain form, uh, fit to different kind of function programs. So when we leave the site, when you it's, it's about one kilo away from the buildings. It's difficult to figure out where is the building, where is the nature. So that is dream. Uh, the, in, also in the philosophy of China, the building should fit into the nature. It's growing together. So that is the, the basic uh, idea, how the growing process, the form finding process, make the whole design uh, uh, the concept. The second part I want to introduce is the, the, another truth we develop in our uh, in our office, the wind tunnel. Normally, the wind tunnel is in structural engineer school. They spent a long time research on that to make uh, millions uh, RMB. Uh, it's very expensive. Normally, it's difficult for designers to use it. But uh, we are trying to develop if this kind of low cost and also design oriented uh, visualization process in the design. So the wind tunnel could be part of uh, the design partner in the early design uh, stage. So uh, this is the first wind tunnel we made. It's around uh, four meters long and something like this. And the first one could make the uh, simulation, the, 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 uh, uh, the scale of one to uh, 500 or one to uh, 1,000. And this is too small scale. So we'll make the second one. This, this one is 12.3 meters long and can simulate the scale one to 200 and one to 300, uh, the, the, the high-rise buildings. There's some details. And after that, we change different section of the wind tunnel to help us to make different kind of simulation. The left one is about the smoke wires can visualize when the wind passing through the, the buildings. And the right one is uh, uh, we can change different location of the buildings in the urban environment to have some feedback about how the ventilation, the wind can, can, uh, can change the formation process of the design. So this is the, the real one. We change different kind of uh, things. And this is a smoke while process. We put in uh, uh, the high rise, like Lego is the early form finding process in the, in the, in the wind tunnel. And they use camera to, uh, to, 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 to record the videos and slowly uh, coming out to simulate the process, how the, the wind passing through. And also we use the kind of scouring uh, experiments to test, use sand put in on the ground to test the, the pedestrian height people, how we can uh, get uh, feedback, the form of the wind in the podium of the architecture. And also this is a different simulation. So the left one is the smoke um, while simulation for the certain height of the building, of certain geometry of the, the, of the plan, uh, typical plan. And the right one is a simulation by CFD. And the bottom is testing the pedestrian height, uh, the wind performance. So through this kind of uh, experiments, we, we can uh, and very fast got some feedback of different geometry in the design process. And also we try to use not a stable building. If for example, not one single building. If we have three buildings, four buildings, if we can change the location and change uh, the initial logic for the form finding, this is a twisting system we make uh, through the Arduino to make the, the uh, autonomous, uh, not autonomous, uh, automatic uh, process to make the form finding. Uh, so this is the process we can see uh, for the form finding by itself, the t twisting by the location of different buildings to make the form finding. So the result is interesting because we can figure out the, if the podium should be twist or the top of it should be twist, different angles will make different uh, geometry for the high rise. And based on that, we participated in Shenzhen Biennale 2016 and the winner award uh, uh, in, in Shenzhen Biennale by the, the methodology we use in the wind tunnel. So it is a huge model. We make research on the um, um, isolated district between Shekou and uh, Qianghai. It's two districts. Originally, it's a very uh, long railway uh, uh, track. Uh, so keep like uh, 80 meters width and uh, 12 meters long uh, width district. We try to make research on uh, on this on this district, and uh, 
uh, we use the, the idea if we can design a certain kind of infrastructure system. The, I think in Shenzhen, if you visit uh, China, it's a very uh, uh, good location for living because people can live there uh, maybe all the season, can stay outdoors. If you have shading system or have good ventilation, it will be very comfortable to stay out outdoors. So we try to put forward the idea if we can design the infrastructure system, can control the, the pedestrian height, the wind speed, and people would like to stay outdoors and would like the high density uh, street life. So the infrastructure system for the high rise is not the programs like the apartments or like office and hotels, but could be some public function for the city. So this is the, the matrix of the wind tunnel, uh, no, the uh, wind tower, and which can control the, the certain skew of the uh, urban, uh, urban space. If the wind is comfortable and the shading is comfortable, we can produce a very livable and uh, liv livable space in the city. So that is the basic idea based on this kind of new technology simulation. So we can see the video uh, in this waste isolated land in the downtown uh, Shekou. The right hand is Shekou, the left hand is Qianghai, which is a true, uh, very representative uh, uh, developing district. But the, in the middle is the is isolated space because of the railway cutting through. So um, uh, the government would want to uh, reuse this uh, this piece of land. So we put forward the idea to set up just an infrastructure system to change maybe in the future it's a, it's a bottom-up uh, development process. And also there's some big canopy with a very high chimney or the, uh, the, the wind tower can change, control certain kind of skew of the urban space and make a different um, uh, uh, urban future. Uh, although the typology in China is all the high-rise are similar, like New York City. But we're trying to, in the Shenzhen Biennale, we're trying to put forward if the infrastructure system, not just horizontal for the pedestrian, not just hidden underground, but could be vertically change the, uh, uh, the urban quality, uh, the wind, and put the, the bird tower, put the, the plants tower, and put this kind of uh, observation uh, uh, be, uh, functions in the, in, the, in the buildings. And also we make some very small high density, super high density blocks in the, uh, uh, in the ground, on the ground, and which can grow in slowly uh, uh, um, in the city. And it, and it could be reorganized by itself. Maybe it's a utopian process, but we put forward it's an idea for the future Shenzhen. So the, the uh, infrastructure can link in two parts of the city and also based on the tradition railway, we can make some commercial programs and the shading of the, the super uh, big scale infrastructure system. And also uh, the wind tower uh, can produce some public functions for the future cities. So the model was uh, is like 100 square meters. It's a very big model, but we spend only one month to do it um, because we use this kind of robotics to cut and make the formation process for the, uh, to the high rise and the formation process. So this is a podium for the um, for the high rise. Okay, this is one project. So it goes to the second part. I would like to talk about our, some of our uh, early work and craft-driven materialization. Well, some of the projects are based on understanding of the new materialism as a generation process in mere material itself. We also we have also begun to explore deeply the, the human driven of material formation process. Here, uh, what I mean about the human driven is 
referring to the production aspects of uh, the building life rather than going into the discussion of constructing particular human experience. So the craft also becomes the driving factors in our design process to review the relationship uh, between the human and the building form in the materialization process. So this is a project we designed in 2008, which is actually my office. Uh, when we arrive in the location, it's not a safe district because it's a, a warehouse district, uh, already isolated for more than 10 years. So we make a renovation based on, this is a silk uh, industry uh, warehouse. So the inspiration, the concept is from the silk. If uh, we can make some uh, 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 facade system to keep uh, my office safe, actually, at the very beginning. So the, the silk is, have some kind of greenness. So the, the fundamental concept is coming from the greenness. If the greenness can make certain kind of performance of the facade, so we change the greenness to the rotation degree of the, the bricks. So that is coming out the concept. So bricks is extremely cheap material uh, in the construction site. So we, we select them and make a design by this kind of diagram. So the, the, the detail drawing here is not the detail like the other buildings, but we design a certain kind of ruler and we, this like a ruler is like a modular system to, uh, to label them with different numbers uh, in, the, in the detail drawings and teach the workers how to position them in the right location. Just a ruler put there and uh, the workers can and put all the bricks in the right location. So this is the, the local workers we work with them as they spend only like uh, two months to two people, two months to construct the whole walls. Um, of the buildings, and the, the details of the facade is, is the, the elegant thing is from this kind of rotation, uh, rotation of the uh, degree of the bricks can make different kind of performance for the, for the facade system. So this is one of our early work, and the second one is a tea house, uh, also in the J office. It originally has a tree. Uh, normally when we make a new building, we'll cut the trees, but we want to have a concept coming out, if the, the, the building can sit in and embracing the, the tree with, it, with this architecture. So this is interior space. So original concept, if we're going through from the ground floor to the second floor, we can embrace in the, the leaves and the branches of the, of the buildings. So the geometry is setting up two kinds of frame. One is the entrance of the stairs. Another is when you're passing through the uh, the, uh, 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 getting onto the second floor, you can have a frame of the, all the leaves and the chunks of the trees. So it's a two geometry as kind of transformation uh, by some rule surface uh, for, the, for the design. And how to construct it is that we, 10 years ago, we're facing this kind of problem. So we make a one, two, two model in the left, right, uh, left corner and uh, teaches the, the workers how to construct. Uh, because the drawings, they can never understand this kind of uh, very complicated geometry, they cannot construct it. But follow the model, it's easily for them to position and to construct the whole buildings. And after that, uh, in 2015, we are thinking about from this kind of basic fundamental tools, if we can generate some form more meaningful. So this is a fab unit space on the west end of Shanghai, which is a gallery space so the function of this is make certain kind of exhibitions. We have two kinds of programs. The right, the, the right hand is two five meter store uh, buildings, the left hand is three story floor. So how to make connection of them? So we have a special uh, circulation space in the middle. And we're thinking about, because concrete structure can never have a span like 50, 50 meters. So we, we want to make the circulation to be a structure system. So how the structure system can, can, can be uh, not only the circulation system, but also could be the structure support system. So that is the original concept for the design. So in the design early stage, we make some analysis by the circulations, how to connect different height and different sec in the different sections of the space, and which is the circulation logical uh, 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 diagrams. And followed by this diagram, we're thinking about to use this kind of three meters width space to make a stairs. 
So right now we use the methodology like the Apple form finding process, which is a BESO algorithm uh, structure performance simulation, which can delete, uh, reduce the concrete to if the, we, 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 we left some material that is useful material. So we, we just reduce the material step by step. So this is a process. It's whole concrete and reduce the material step by step, generation by generation. And we make models uh, to present this building in GSD last year exhibition. So left one is a solid concrete system. And step by step, we take away the, reduce the, the concrete material. And by this kind of uh, BSO algorithm structure uh, optimization tools, we can find the form like this. So this is the design process. So in this case, it's totally different to the, the, the first building we present, the tea house. The tea house is just geometry is a form. But here, the geometry change transferred to a structural system. So in the construction process, we need to, to think about how to construct the buildings. From the plans, we can see the, 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 the wall and the, um, and the floor is very thick. But actually, it's not so thick. It's just because from the section, it changed to be very thick. So, and also we join a lot of sections and try to teach the workers how to construct this building. But this never worked because this kind of sections can never represent the real depths of the, the floor because it's all diagonal. It's cutting through it will be extremely useless. So we make a lot of models actually to teach step by step, floor by floor, floor, by floor to the workers. So the, the models change to be very useful in the construction process. So after the building finish, something like this. The folding walls change to be a support structure system for the whole building system. And it's not reasonable from um, the, the origin. Normally, the building should be straightly the forces from the, the upper floor to the, to the, to the uh, downstairs. But in this building, based on the simulation tools, the forces is transferred from its folding from the second floor to the ground floor. And the inside edge is stairs. So you can go inside the stairs and go outside to the open stairs, and then go inside to the in, in, uh, inside stairs. So it's inside outside process make a different kind of experience in the building when you're working through. So from the bottom of the stairs, you can see it's very heavy, although it's only 15 meters width. So the light, we use two light. One is the, the roof light, it's washing the washing the concrete wall. Another is parallel light. It's also washing the whole space. So we're showing two kind of darkness of the concrete and showing the heaviness and which is volume of the whole buildings have a very strong experience when you're passing through these buildings. And then at night, lighting up the building like this. So when we go to the, the second floor, you can see the left hand is the, 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 the outside stairs and the right hand is the in, inside stairs. So from outside to inside, the kind of folding and unfolding process, we totally have a, a different experience. So the, the forces passing through is, is not vertical, but is not vertical, but like this diagonal, the forces from here all the way to this point, and all this weight is from this steer to the another point. So it's, it's not a vertical forces flowing system. It's a diagonal forces for instance, it only could be simulated by the computer. So right now in this project, we're thinking about the machine, the computer can collaborate with the designers to make some new form, more meaningful form. And also the designer can think about how to organize the circulation process from inside outside to make different kind of experience. So we make a lot of events in this, pro in this project, including some um, national famous dancers they make special event, and also some composers. And uh, this is a project of the artist present different kind of work inside the buildings, which has a different kind of dialogue to the space. So third part, going to the human and machine association, what we're doing in my office. So the machine being introduced into the building industry the materialization process of the form would not solely rely on the labor of human being animal. So the definition of craft could be also transferred by association between the human and the machine. 
So in this scenario, we believe that the craft should not be interpreted as just the partner, uh, a particular way of, um, of putting material together, but has to expand it into the reorganization of the building production system. So as a collaboration between the human and machine, the world performs a new way of construct construction. So this is actually in my design office. So I think we are the first in the world to have a robotic lab inside the design office. Why we do that? Because we're thinking about the designers in the future is not designed by the computer, by the models, but we should making the, uh, the building by yourself. We can invent some special tools and uh, that could be a certain kind of uh, authorship for the future designers and make uh, the buildings more meaningful to the designers. So on this platform, we make a lot of experiments. So our idea here is from the practice to practice. That means we make more, further more research in my office. This is the, the whole, design, whole site of my office. We have an exhibition space. We have um, a courtyard, and we have a robot yard, and we have office space, and also have the tea house. So the process of the office is growing. It's, not, it's also a process. The, the, the top one is 10 years ago, and it's slowly going on. And right now, it's something like this, because Ivy is growing, the surrounding, embracing the whole office. Indoor orders are, have a certain kind of dialogue to each other. And in the exhibition space, we can figure out all the models tracing what we're doing, different kind of experiments in all of our projects. Yes, actually a lot of mock-up, one-to-one skill mock-up in the office because we try to test the material, the making of material, and to redesign the process of the materialization of the future architectures. And also the laboratory, we have a lot of tests and most of them test to failure. This is one of my PhD students. We're doing a, a, some experiments on the timber structure. So we're thinking about in this kind of laboratory life, the ultimate objective of research is to experiment. And through this experimentation, we want to establish a new kind of credibility. Because the credibility for the future generation it's not just meaning you can design a building, but you can, if you can design a tool, it's also meaningful. And actually, the signature and credibility for the future architects could be based on not just you can make a spatial, meaningful test, but also you can set up a new kind of tools with you in the office. And in this situation, we're trying to figure out the relationship between what is practice and what is research. And uh, in this situation, we, we, we could create a very interesting relation between the design research and the building practice. So an analog to the, the Latour's notion, what is the scientific result uh, of the future architecture, which has the meanings to position us in the new networks. The networks is not just one university, one professor, but it should be the networks of a lot of new generation, like the, the artists and the architecture, architects from out of the world and professors from different places coming together. That's why in the last seven years, we set up a Digital Future a Shanghai special event. We make a group research on the robotics. We try to set up a new model for the future research. So for example, this is just one example on the uh, research of the, the bricks uh, from line to wall, how to use the grasshopper to find a certain kind of form. This is also another grasshopper model to, 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 to set up different parameters. The parameters can change, we can change the information, the data, and to make this different kind of form. But the form is not easily for construction. But based on our tools, it will be extremely efficient if you want to make any brick, any form based on the bricks. And also this is from surface, not from line, from surface to the wall, and from box to wall, we have different kind of toolbox developed. And the most important for brick mention is the overlap part, because that is, should be based on the finite element simulation and optimization process. But the overlap uh, should be 
carefully calculated in the computer by the structure engineer. But based on certain kind of tools, we can implement the tools, the grasshopper plugging tools, to design the reasonable form of the brick walls. So this is a process of the how to put the put how to put the rebar uh, and the, how to make the organization and how to bend in the rebar uh, for certain kind of uh, uh, twisting uh, in this kind of brick walls. So it's all the toolbox development. This is just one example. So we develop not just the design process, we also develop the tools, the on-site robotic machinery equipment. This is the generation one we developed in 2012 uh, from model to construction. So we use these tools how to um, uh, make the, uh, the machinery equipment to feed, it, feed the, the, the bricks and how to uh, make the, uh, the equipment work. And the, this machine, we first do this, this wall because the twisting wall is all different. We need to position this equipment four times on site to position each brick on this position. But this is too small. Cannot, the robotics is very small. It's not very efficient. So we develop a second generation. It's like this. So this is the, all the joints and the, the robotic tools we develop, including the motor feeding system. And also this, uh, this is a, uh, the bricks how the brakes uh, supply to the, to, the, to the robotics. Yes, all the details we did. And the most important is how to make the navigation in the inside space. So we put different kind of uh, UWB sensors and use the laser uh, 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 motor rating in the space and help the robotics position uh, how to find the right location of the each brick. And this is autodos. We use uh, Kinect tools to help the robotics to, to put the brick on the right position. And this is a simulation in the computer. And the construction I will show you like this. This is the, the tools we develop. <laughs> and still we need the workers to clean all the details. Yeah. But this is a basic process. We, uh, one of my PhD doing this, yeah. And use this, this uh, special generation two, we make the wall like this, the brick layer walls, and the inner is the insulation, and the, another layer is the uh, concrete. So put this sandwich system of the uh, architecture uh, system, architecture uh, uh, facade system. So this is building we design, and we teach the um, fabricator to buy several robotics in the factory to make the wall. It's a prefab in the factory, pieces by pieces, sandwich style, and hanging them on site floor by floor. So this is a process. I wanted to put the example as the human machine. Uh, for the designer, it's not just de design a facade, but we design the whole process, including the equipments including the, the tools, how to construct the building like this. Another one is Chi Shi. This is on-site work. That is prefab. And we go to the site. And this time is more challenge because location on, is west bound of Shanghai Pump River and the Bountain Air, Airport District. A lot of waste uh, warehouse, a lot of waste bricks everywhere. It's an urban renovation project, and uh, uh, two artists want to develop the art gallery space. So we, we restrain the in initial wall, um, exterior walls, and followed by the elementary performance uh, and structure refinement in front of, uh, in order to provide a maximum exhibition space. So the concept is to gradually change the bricks and from wall to the, the rain shade canopy. So it's, it's kind of from the uh, typography to the topography of the, of the space. So uh, the integration of reused brick uh, on site, because this is roughness, it's not accurate. But the robotic can do it very accurate and precisely, uh, put them on the right location. So it's very interesting. Uh, uh, it's, it's very rough uh, bricks and make very 
precise and accurate position and make the building very special. So the, the Greek, uh, bricks coordinate with the building have been applied to the exterior part located on the main interface towards the park. The contrast between this kind of roughness and the accurate uh, make a special additive for the buildings. This is a facade in the poster. And the right location is here on the riverfront of Shanghai. The design process is not so easy, actually. We evaluate as a architects. We use some structure performance imaging tools to simulate the displacement, the stress, the wing load, and also how to integrate this kind of different performance, structure performance, to, to design the, the density of the material and to put them in the right location. It's all the form finding process. Um, to simulate precisely brick by brick and teach the robotics how to construct uh, locally on the, on, on the site. And also we have some steel structure hidden in the back. The roof structure has been replaced by a lightweight uh, timber structure. And we, 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 we also evaluate part of the roof to make light coming in and to lighting on the special wall to, put, uh, to make a special space for the gallery. So this is the lab, and based on that, we would like to introduce a project which is finished uh, two months ago. This is a project uh, collaborated with Archimangus and uh, my team. And uh, Martin is one of the PhD candidates from University of Sugat, come to Shanghai and collaborate with two of my PhD candidates. And they spent one month and a half in my lab to construct the whole pavilion in Shenzhen. Shenzhen uh, newly opened a, a, a contemporary art museum and they collect uh, these pieces. Uh, right now it's still an uh, exhibition in Shenzhen right now. So we use plywood as a material and also the sewing machine could be uh, a special tools. Uh, to make the new uh, material performance of this installation. So all the details are specially designed um, and all the, the form, the formation process is based on the structure. If we're folding them, we can have a self-support system to standing up by itself without any other uh, uh, hanging material. It's a self-standing structure. Two layers of the, uh, uh, of the plywood and sewn by the machine can make the certain joints. So the sewing material is a, a carbon fiber, uh, two centimeters uh, radius carbon fiber to weaving the, uh, the wires of the plywood. The plywood is 3.5 millimeter width. And also we cut it by, in my lab we have a five axis CNC, pieces by pieces cut all the components and uh, folding them to certain form and uh, sewn by the robotics. So this is a future architect's work. You not only design, modeling in front of the computer, but also the making whole process. You participate, and also including inventing the certain tools to make the certain form and certain pavilion. This is only the pavilion. And after this, uh, actually parallel to this, we make another toolbox, which is a 3D printing technology. So generation by generation, from the left one to the right one, we spend five years to develop different toolbox of the 3D printing. And also material from ABS to modified plastic, we try different material to test materiality of the printing material. This is the, in the, my undergraduate student studio. I asked them to, to how to print a chair. So methodology is the same. It's, it's a structural performance based design by the density of the structure of the chair. And we translate this kind of density to the two paths. We develop five prototypes which uh, have different lengths of the printing paths. 
and then printing different density of the chairs. This is the final result for the undergraduate studio work. This is another one. This is the tools we put in the studio. And that one is a simulation one. This is a real one. Although it's some different, but this kind of roughness gives very interesting uh, of, the, of this chair. And also we design three people, this triple people bench and project, which is based on the geometry form finding process and also the structural simulation, which could be standing safely. This is a ran, ran, uh, uh, rendering process, modeling process. This is the structural simulation process. And the whole printing process, uh, process spent only 15 hours. So it's, it's kind of customized products. In the future, if you, you can have a very good design thinking, you can make it by yourself, by the students, even after your graduation. You can set up your own business on the, the furniture making. This is a single chair by one of my students. With a different material percentage, we can have a different materiality. So this bench is printed only seven hours. This chair. And after that, we don't think we just can print a small chair. We want to print some structure. So we try to print a wave bridge in, inside our university. So this is in front of our building C. Uh, one bridge is cutting through from the, the ground floor to the basement. Another is cutting through this small pond. The, the, the big one, um, the, the net span is 11 meter, and the small one is four meters. The whole design process is, the first is back, uh, kangaroo is a structural performance simulation to, to, to find the form of double curve, the upper curve and the lower curve, and between that we can make some other material. So this is the first step. We use some structure performance simulation to generate form. The second step is to delete, reduce the material, the same to the idea we put for the Apple tools. So the mid pattern can help us to delete, reduce the material. So the, the, the last one is the, only the printing path is the minimum material we use for the, for the whole bridge. And then it's too heavy. We cannot make them one pieces. We need to cut them into different components. So we need to simulate by another st structure uh, uh, software is Karamba. It's also a structured simulation tools. And this one is for the details. Uh, Avatars, another structured simulation software. So totally we, we, we can collaborate with five kinds of structured simulation tools to generate the bridge and simulate if it's safe enough for the people, five people to passing through the bridge. And after that, we print it. Uh, so the printing pass is the minimum uh, pass and we can save the material. So totally we spend 320 hours. We use three robotics printing them in seven days. So in the workshop it's like uh, eight days. So we, we, we print them and construct them uh, in, in, in very short time. So the construction process needs to be designed, how to put everything safely, step by step, uh, set up this building. So this is from the, the morning to the day and night, 20 hours working by some students and, some, and two workers. Construct the whole bridge on site, in, inside of university. And the, the early morning, I was asked to see and asked me to be the first one to pass through the bridge. It's around 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so it's a special time to be record. A little bit scared. But it's safety. Yeah. So after this, we're printing the bridge. A lot of students and professors, not from our school, but from the, the material science school and also the um, uh, structure engineer school. They're asking a lot of questions and put forward a lot of interesting uh, suggestions for, for future study. And in the opening of exhibition, Patrick Schumacher coming, 
and uh, two of us passing through the bridge. This is time. <laughs> And this guy, the, le the left, the second left, is the Secretary General of China Architect Society. He came to visit and asked me how many people can stand on the bridge. I told him five. He asked five uh, boys and uh, gentlemen standing then, but it's very safe to so standing on it. So after the bridge, we are thinking about if we can print even bigger uh, by this methodology, structure performance simulation form finding and printing technology. So four months later, we print a pavilion in Shanghai, our season uh, last year. This is a real pavilion. This is a form finding process. First step is geometry form finding. So the most difficult is how to make this geometry stand. So we need to uh, use different kind of software to simulate the structure system and how to simulate the density, which part should be strong, which part could be weak. So it's changed to be the density of the material. It's the same to the chair. We're teaching a student printing the, the small chair. We're using the large scale and the same methodology. So different density represent the two paths. The printing long or printing short can make the density of the, the whole pavilion. So this one we print almost one month. So the whole process simulation is all in grasshopper like this. So all the printing paths is simulating the computer first and simulating the printing process by robotics and then we're printing them uh, by three robotics in one, in, uh, one month. This is the printing process by this kind of plastic step by step 24 hours. So after the construction it's like this, self-standing safely. If they're hidden in the greenery, the semi-transparent, it's quite different feeling in the nature. In the opening of the R season, RCR, the one of the principal participated the opening. And Yung Ho Zhang and also Evan Douglas from RPI was in the events. And right now what we're doing is for the Venice Biennale, for China Pavilion, we're printing a cloud village. It's not just one building. So in my office today, is still all the robotics are printing right now. So this is the, we announced this, this is public announced first in, in, in Colombia. We will, uh, the, the pavilion will be exhibited uh, in, at the end of May in Venice Biennale. Biennale. It's one of the most important Pavilion in China, China Pavilion. China, uh, yeah. So it's totally 250 square meters on the surface of the material. Not only the plastic, the plastic is reused material, very meaningful in China because we can reuse different kind of plastic in the future if we, we can implement this technology to printing some structure or some, some installation. At the same time, robotic is a tradition methodology. We're very fast going through. The left one is our research. The right one is our real project. So the speciality, this is a tradition laminate process for the timber structure industry in China. But we help them to develop how to update the version of the timber structures. This is our, the tools we develop in the robotic factory. We can cut in very fast the curve beam and the curved column. This is a tool we develop and teach the fabricator, the industry people, how to precisely, without any news, it's just a hand, this support, self-support system for the future uh, building system. So through this, the right one is a simulation in the computer and the left one is the real uh, production making process. 
So this is the future architects you need to understand. What's your job you need to do? If you can connect directly from your office to the fabricator, that is totally redefining the discipline of architecture. So this is Pavilion in one week. In Digital Shanghai uh, workshop, we make the, the left one. And then six months later, we designed the, the expert house in the horticulture uh, exhibition in China. The building, this is construction process. All the beams are curved. And it's a double curvature roof system. All the joints are different. How to make the joints? We need to develop special tools. We are not the fabricator. We teach, but we teach the fabricator how to update their tools. Because this is a diagonal passing through. The human body cannot make the very accurate angles to passing through, but the robotic can precisely, efficiently making this. So it is design process. And very fast going through this. So the double curvature service of the buildings is a self-support system, all the compression of the material. And the joints of it, we have some steel joints in the middle of the timber structure. So it's all diagonal. So the tradition industry cannot make it. So we develop only one robotics and teach them that every joint spend 40 minutes to milling them precisely for this building. So my office sent all the files from Shanghai to Suzhou to the to the to the uh, uh, to the factory and make everything. Uh, that is the future works, the design office you need to do. The special part is it's a diagonal, yeah, precisely. So after construction, is the space is like this. It's double curvature. All the joints are different. So last project, um, going to the In Bamboo project, because this is in the village, in the rural district of China. It's very, it's very difficult to control, normally, because it's far away from the town center, and how to design and construct this building. So we make uh, uh, two courtyard which connect to each other because originally it's, it's, it's a, a, a true family, but because the young generation all moving to the big city, so it's, uh, this two courtyard was almost crashed down. So we, we redefined the geometry to link these two, two courtyard together through double curvature uh, roof. So the form finding process is something like this. But no difficult part is how to construct it. So we use the same methodology, the beam, uh, column beam system, to make the, the roof system of the, the building. So this is the different layers. So the, the special part is we, we collab with the same factory because we teach them how to use robotics, although all the joints are different, but they can make it very easy because this project is, is easier than the formal project. But they, have, they know how to use the new tools to de develop this kind of structure system. So the real construction process. And also we have drawing sections, something like this. So in bamboo showing the kind of uh, Chinese philosophy, it's kind of hidden and escape from the, the town center, but it's collaborated with the vegetable field, with the trees, bamboos, and hidden. It's a kind of screenery, new screen of the buildings. And also we designed the entrance pavilion, use bamboo as a material for the geometry form finding process. This one we collab with local craftsmen. The weaving process, welcome people enter. From the hidden to, to figure out where is the building. And we have two courtyard. One is a courtyard like this, another one is a pond. And we can find a connection to make the public space, special exhibitions, and also some, some seminar was held in this community center. And the roof is a local material, and facade is weaving bamboo. 
So it's all from the tradition, but actually use some new technology to make special uh, filling of the buildings. Also local villagers planting the vegetables in the field, which has a dialogue to the building and the field. The interesting is you can find all these workers are eldest people, more than 50 years old. And I take another picture, you can see most of them are the females. Why? Because their son, they got go to the universities. After their graduation, they don't like to go back to the, the rural district of China. And also their husband maybe find a job in the construction field in the big cities. So there is no industry actually in the rural district of China. So I pushing out uh, this, after this project to the government people, if they can set up a small robotic factory to help the local people to update the version of their villages. So right now it's a good, uh, uh, I got an invitation to renovate not just this building, uh, design this building. Right now we renovate uh, the whole village, including 85 families. So we design seven public buildings and also teaching all the local villagers. They can, they can learn how to use this kind of timber structure, tiles, and the traditional material to construct their home. So the technology, the materiality, the making process of architecture, I think finally should go to why we, we design and who we design for. I think the material really matters, the social networks and the responsibility of the architects for the whole society. So uh, this project was luckily selected also for the China Pavilion, we'll expect in the May. Uh, uh, of this year, and we will present uh, not only the in bamboo one project, but also we can see the white project is some public new building, including the, the camps, summer camps for the kids, and also have some welcome center, and have some other uh, uh, ex exhibition space for the local uh, uh, bamboo weaving industry, this kind of buildings. And also we update the version of the infrastructure system of the of the, uh, all the canals and this kind of things. And we hope, we hope we can present a different countryside, a different industry uh, in China. So that is what I'm doing. And hopefully, uh, we can make some further discussion on this. So thank you for all of you. So this is a dog because Chinese New Year is a dog year. And one of my students last night, he, he used robotics to join. <laughs> a little bit long, <laughs> one hour and a half. Is this working? Don't go, we unpack Philip's uh, life now in less than three hours and with less than five questions. Okay. Thank you very much for um, being here. I would like to engage in a conversation as we move through, through uh, the next couple of minutes, but before that, I um, did do my homework and uh, would like to um, do a three sentence uh, reply along the lines of uh, old meets new before old gets new again, which is kind of a challenge when it comes to uh, fabrication and like um, a mode of uh, parametricism and production, particularly at the time where you can look at projects through the lens of uh, software and determine their age based on what software was used, which is not the case in uh, your project. Um, Arch Union's research and practice focuses on integration of traditional materials, as we um, saw and, and, and realized in some of the really excellent uh, modes of uh, engagements that you shared with us, but also computational design and production technologies discovering both the local within uh, the global. If I would ask Philip for Philip's response, it would be along the line that fabrication can be framed through formation, simulation, materialization, optimization, and industrialization. Um, what I would like to offer, and also in response to what I discussed with my students earlier, is a sixth point here for you to take with you, um, um, to Tongchi and like to, to uh, 
Archeunion from Colombia Chisa, which is uh, a point along the line of uh, identity, the one way or other, uh, looking at it through the lens of what global means within the context of uh, local. Um, and maybe a completely new understanding of it uh, in terms of its meaning, but also a recognition of somewhat not all that uh, new reality. Identity was in the context of uh, re-identification, a kind of complete absence of the local, which also exists, um, particularly the absence of uh, um, homeland uh, in, in, in whatever terminology we want to define this, forcing uh, refugees of war, climate, economics, hostility, or hostilities, um, I should say, to take on, adopt, often invent completely new identities, but also identity um, in the context of changing environment, climate, um, that we are exposed to now rather than, let's say, 10 years ago in a, in a kind of uh, pre-iPhone uh, world where identity allows you to curate uh, image on a screen, your kind of like local becomes WhatsApp, your kind of like global context and address, uh, the one way or other becomes your Instagram uh, handle. But it's also influenced by what you write uh, about in, I believe, digital reality, right? Like that you published in, in um, 2011, which kind of like links to the tectonic identity uh, or digital tectonic that you uh, spoke about. But then also tectonics in terms of uh, crisis or identity in relationship to uh, crisis. Crisis as an uh, um, identifier, but also crisis as a generative mode, right? Like in terms of um, absence of materials, the desire of uh, optimization. But then also the crisis within uh, the question of uh, what does singular mean within the context of uh, collaborative, right? Like where the office, atelier, collaborative or um, group becomes uh, um, um, plural rather than like that single uh, architect's uh, entity. But then also looking at examples that make architecture then again look kind of like old, right? Like when Sin Malik is doing poetry, uh, um, Virgil Abloh is working with, um, I don't know, uh, Nike and, and uh, Converse. But then there's also groups uh, around the corner of your office that I'm particularly excited about, particularly looking at uh, what some of us did in, on the weekend uh, as part of the uh, Asia Incubation Project that presented like as part of New York's uh, Fashion Week, namely looking at uh, Hong Kong's Kavaki, then uh, Vlida in South Korea, Fumiaki, Oyo Vanaka, uh, Hyun Lee, and so on and so forth, that completely define and redefine the norm of um, identity in a way that uh, questions of uh, um, um, gender, locality, but then also um, global and, and, and local is, is, is challenged through, in fact, something that relates to the body in a very different way, which is um, in that context, uh, fashion and identity through uh, them coming from architecture moving into one of the kind of like um, 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 uh, challenges that very much relate to also fabrication as you speak about the body and like the relationship of the body uh, to architecture. Um, before I move to my first question, I, I would like to like add 0 0.1 like to that sixth point, which would be the one of geography. Um, I found it incredibly interesting that you use narrative, multiple narratives, uh, to define um, um, your work. Uh, if there's one unifier, it would probably be uh, space, uh, the one way or other. Um, some may think that that this topic is for like physicists or um, architects in general, but you approach space within your work, I think, as a geographer. We, um, we had a chance to speak about Doreen Smasi's work earlier, who is a ge geography which looks at um, history um, and time uh, within the relationship of space uh, along the line of uh, what geography means in the context uh, of space, not outer space or space in meaning of atomic space, but uh, any of the above. It is space that is a dimension of world in which you live in or the projects that you situate um, 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 in. But they do concentrate on the temporal dimension and how things change over time rather than concentrate uh, in a way things are arranged in the sense of like outer space in relationship to uh, geography. Which um, leads me to my first question, which is the one of like, uh, what do you think about um, the architectural vernacular uh, within the digital that, that I think takes a very different approach than, for example, you showed Schumacher on, on, on your screen than, you know, parametricism does and like um, um, their work does. Not only because making comes so close 
to it, uh, um, which is very close to our heart here as well, but it kind of also neglects uh, the fetishization of fabrication. Would you agree with this? Or? Yeah, I have some discussion with Patrick on the similar topic you put forward. I think uh, the discussion you're talking about, um, Patrick is, is trying to put forward as a kind of a style, as a kind of a new paradigm from the form, from the formalist, the formalism, to the construction, the inference, the, the, the whole society networks, and understanding like it's, it's like a linguistic ways for the future architecture. But I want to put forward my idea is the, that is maybe a global thinking and design methodology, but the, right. the materiality change, the material making process change to be a very local things because you can implement this, your uh, invention of the tools to generate totally different materiality and uh, the making process of uh, the building and uh, of the installation. So I think the materiality and the mater material process totally is a kind of, uh, 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 is kind of debate and is kind of uh, invent, uh, 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 is kind of uh, totally disagree to what's right. the Patrick's understanding is purely white and without any folding and uh, continuous and a uh, differential facade, we, we cut it into the materiality. The skill of uh, the material can give us a steel. The matrix of the 3D printing uh, uh, plastic right. and the bricks and also the timber structure all give the materiality and the skill of the building. So I think this kind of making process tend to be very important and interesting mm -hmm. because the, the fabrication will put forward a new possibility new um, uh, advantage to, the, to our discipline because that belong to the individuals, belong to localities, belong to the, their mm -hmm. cultural background. So that is even further than the globalization, the global process. So I think this global integration of the global and local process will make something special. Mm -hmm. That is the credibility or the, mm -hmm. Uh, for the future architects. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because you also showed like um, um, uh, Caramba and, and Kangaroo's yeah, yeah. Uh, um, um, visualizations, mm -hmm. which yeah. was exciting to see because Adam Malinsky, who was like one of the three characters that mm -hmm. developed that piece of software, is, a, yeah. is an advisor to our like um, um, core um, 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 structural mm -hmm. um, software approach, actually. Uh, so it's interesting to see at the same time, if I look at scale or if we look at scales that do carry different significance throughout like um, some of the projects you shared, which pair technology, handicraft, uh, material sourcing, merging functions of different scales and facade patterns. Um, it's hard to neglect this somewhat smartness that is tried to be projected onto projects, uh, which is interesting because we just right in the same room had a mm -hmm. very exciting um, conference with uh, Laura Kurgan here on Friday looking at cities, uh, mm -hmm. where Laura looked at uh, cities through the lens of it being a not so smart city, right? Like mm -hmm. smart cities that are anti-smart. Mm -hmm. um, um, I was wondering when you look at uh, smart fabrication technologies or equals, um, like in some of the exciting projects, mm -hmm. do you think that equals smart architects, equals smart projects, equals mm -hmm. smart yeah. cities, which then I think would lead to just that very basic question, which mm -hmm. is, is there anything like anti or not so smart in, in, in the way you approach your projects? Architecture discipline is a quite uh, long history right. discipline, and something changed slowly. Although you can see the car industry, the airplane, the shipping industry, they already totally changed from the the human labor to the machinic process. Mm -hmm. But the architecture is different. The materiality and uh, the tradition building the, the whole construction process. And the most important is what the benefits the future architects can give us. Maybe it's not just uh, abstract or the information process of the building, but it could be a kind of dialogue between the human being to the nature. It's kind of a new uh, opportunity to create some space you like, uh, some uh, things you can, you can like because you're from the locality, right. your homeland, your, your, your nature, your, 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 your local landscape. That could be all the uh, very important factors of the future mm -hmm. building and the environment. So uh, I read a paper several days ago, and the topic is about the, the 
the, the visualization and materialization. I think uh, the big data or this kind of smart city, they can have a, a mining process and, and make a great use of the data and can help us to review, visualize a lot of things we don't know before. But that is just a method and process. The final objective for this kind of things is to still go through the materialization process of our daily life. And that could be a still kind of relation to our believings, our mm -hmm. feelings, and to our what you like when you're growing up. So mm -hmm. that is not changing so easily. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the new industry, a uh, new um, technology will change a lot uh, for what we're doing, but it's just the future and, and name is a machine and the human collaborate future. It's mm -hmm. not a machine replace human uh, future. So mm -hmm. I think the smart building is not the building uh, mm -hmm. like he is smarter than you, but the, the, mm -hmm. the kind of smart technology help you to make a better experience, your mm -hmm. feelings, and uh, uh, it's kind of dialogue of your behaviors would be more comfortable in this kind of building. So that is maybe the new technology can, get, can mm -hmm. give us some new opportunity. Mm -hmm. The, on that note, the the pairing you're talking about, right? Mm. Like in terms of um, digital technology, traditional building materials is creating a variety of different also material effects or visual effects. Mm -hmm. um, um, looking at some of the facades where the brick doesn't necessarily become mm -hmm. the wall, but it becomes part of like its, its kind of uh, image uh, yeah. uh, in its most powerful sense. Do you think that could be considered as part of uh, the vernacular that you talk about mm -hmm. uh, itself? Or is it based on the restraints that come from both robotics and, and um, um, the materials. And if so, if you look at uh, construction like in the Shanghai um, um, Art Center, do you think that scale in pixelation is a dramatic shift in terms of how we interact with the building as an image rather than the pattern created uh, that is very much a result of yet again like human assemblage? trying to now make the link to what we are here very excited about in terms of what's happening this Friday, which is Vistac. Um, um, if you're around, it like, would be great if you could join as well to like, think this through, which is kind of like looking at the interlink between visualization and technology, which is what you are talking about uh, um, in your work as well. But what does, the, what does the image do and the power of the image in relationship to the kind of the building that you inhabit or that you imagine to inhabit? And the kind of asterisk to that is, is the lab that you showed, right? Like with um, um, your robotic arm being really the first one of its kind, which is exciting uh, at the one hand side. At the same time, um, it's also exciting to look at the cloud lab, the lab on a chip, right? Like that you do in, in Tongqi, uh, uh, as I know, the community lab that you're talking about within the context of uh, Zhizhen, um, desktop labs, labs uh, um, um, that are like just purely robotic based. Is, is, is the kind of the spatial limitation of what you do and how you do it relevant to what the outcome is? So right now what we're doing is actually not uh just we ourselves set up office right. or set up a lab in the university. In China, we set up the Digital Architect Design Association. I'm the uh, co-founder of that association. Association. I think 10 years ago, just 21 universities had robotics. But right now, 26 universities have robotics. Right. And also, we set up, uh, collab with some local fab fabricator, tr try to set up some website to interwove in this kind, interweaving this kind of relationship. Right from different material making process to the real building. Mm -hmm. I think the future of the design is, to, is a kind of digital twin. Left hand is simulation, the right hand right. is the materialization. So it should be collaborate with each other. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of twins mm -hmm. uh, collaborate with each other. And we should have networks, right. not just one designer. Right. It's, we have networks important to, to integrate the, right. the social network system. So that will be totally mm -hmm. redefined architecture discipline, how we teach the students, right. how we learning when we are students, and how we work in the future. Now we should be thinking mm -hmm. about this kind of paradigm shift. One of my last questions before we open this up would be, do you think that style or like type of um, pairing uh, in terms of uh, teaching is 
a trend that um, is globally specific with what you talk about in relation to its kind of site, right? Mm -hmm. Like and, and geography of China in, in, in that context. Um, is this possible to like, or did you other than Tongqi and some of the labs that you're talking about to kind of like export? And if so, how would you imagine this to be um, um, integrated as a kind of like digital arts class, like set aside or are there uh, any material studies, like moments in terms of like what you also do at, at, at Tongqi to be transported? Or how does the context of China and the specificity of how you relate to culture and labor um, um, change, not only um, what a possible export of it means, but then yet again, like cycling back to the question of like the local? Yeah. At the very beginning, in the last seven years, we set up the Future Shanghai Workshop. Right. I think some senior professors in the first three or four years, they totally don't like what we're doing, actually. Although we invited a lot of important figures from all over the world, like Aki Mangus, uh -huh. Anthony Picon, this, this important, they make lectures, right. they're teaching, and Neil Leach and teaching with us. But uh, a lot of uh, professors don't like us. Uh, but after some time, I think uh, we easily collaborate with some fabricator and industry people. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. They actually sponsor us a lot, mm -hmm. not only in the workshop, but also in the real project. Mm -hmm. you know? So we, we have we published some right. buildings, right. and we have doing that, and also we make a lot of pavilions. Today is not enough time to, to introduce everyone, but we make every year like six to 12 pavilions we make. Not my team. Yeah. We, we, we invited different right. guys coming, making teams, right. making, making pavilions. So these kind of things like a manifesto process you know, to, the, to some professors. Right, right now, slowly, I think it's, it's, a, it's a large influence to the teaching process mm -hmm. and how we can teach to, you, right. to, to study this kind of structural simulation tools. Mm -hmm. Originally, no mm -hmm. one teach this. Sure and how to teach robotics. Mm -hmm. But right now we can open some courses in undergraduate and graduate school. And parallel, I'm teaching the studio, for example, I will invite some um, of my PhD candidates, right. uh, some, some young architects and teaching with me. And it's like a, a certain kind of stream can put, push this kind of new thinking. Not yeah, all yeah. the studio like, like mm -hmm. my studio, but I think we play quite imp important influence to the other Absolutely. students. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for letting us unpack this. Um, I would like to open this up for um, questions, if there are any, um, and we further unpack. Greg. Hi, um, I fascinating. A fa fascinating presentation. Thank you very much. Your work is brilliant. Um, I, I was personally struck by your setting up um, sort of representation and materialization is sort of the opposite ends of how robotics mm -hmm. can really manifest itself in architecture. It, it just seems to me that through your work, there's a lot of simulation that somehow ties these things together. Can you speak more about that? Because it, 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 it seems to be grounded in many of the things that you're doing. Yeah. It's a very good question. Actually, the simulation is a key, is a core um, process in the future design. In the digital twin, we name half of it is simulation, half of, half of it is, is materialization. So simulation, including the robotics, before the real things happen in the computer, all the robotic two, two paths could be simulated. And also we can simulate the building in the environment. We can simulate the structure uh, performance in the computer. So we, we have a talk, a very long uh, discussion with some of structure engineers in Shanghai last month. They're, the structure engineers worry about their future job. They're talking about you can use all the tools we, we use and how we can find our job. But I think I told them that it's different implementation because we use a structure simulation not for the real accurate uh, details for the structure, but we just need a concept, you know? But some tools, like 3D printing, we can use, it's like a, it's like a package, you know, from the mm -hmm. beginning to the end. It's totally from the architecture to structure to, to robotic fabrication. It's, it's already it's a loop system. But the other, like timber structure, we still need some professional structure need to participate. So this kind of simulation will replace the jobs. Right now, we, we 
the disciplines we define. The structural engineer, MEP engineer, and architects, I hope in the future, if the computer and the, the plugin tools are strong enough, the architects can implement just this kind of tools to help you to make a lot of design at a very beginning stage. Maybe the structural engineer only in the, in the detail stage, they, they will participate to make it more reasonable to the, to the construction drawings. So that is changing. It's really happened right now. So the simulation is a great design process. In the teaching studios, we spend a lot of time teaching the conceptual process, making process, but the simulation is a, is a special part. That is cross the discipline, not just architecture. Partly it's like the, the, the simulation of the environment. The ventilation simulation, we use wind tunnel, for example. It's not belong to anyone. The knowledge in the future belongs to everyone. If I want to make a wind tunnel, I spent only several months to make, make a wind tunnel. Although we adjust it a lot of times, but we can make it. We can simulate a lot of things. And then we'll give it to the structural engineer, and they, they will uh, help us to, to, to make it more reasonable. But the, or, the original concept, the structure, ideas already built in the very early age of the design process. So the future architects is, should have a lot of strong ability to know everything. Maybe you not develop a toolbox two, two or a plugin, but you, you, may, you, you need to learn how to make use of them. So in my studio, I told my students, three days you must study a new software. So in one term, normally more than 20 software we use, for example, in the 3D printing, Studio, it's one term from printing a chair to printing a bridge. They study, my students study more than 20 softwares. If we don't know, we invite some the people to, 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 to teach us and we can learn together with them. So it's a totally open system. That's why I admire this kind of workshop. I invited a lot of important figures in the world to, to Shanghai. We're learning a lot from them. They're learning a, a lot from each other. So I think that is a future education pedagogy system. Not, the knowledge not belong to anyone. It will be a totally open source and a very fast optimization process. Mm -hmm. So we need to rethinking our discipline, our teaching right now, I think. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Professor Yuan and Professor Kapish. Um, I have two questions. One of them is, um, you mentioned like what the future architects can do. I'm thinking about the much further future, like say another 5,000 years from now, mm -hmm. when um, everything like disappeared, when they receive a ruin of the digital fabricated building, mm -hmm. are they still able to imagine what the whole building system was like? I guess my question is, does that mean uh, we need to think of new ways to archive the buildings and to archive our cities. Maybe instead of archiving like parts or like sample of the building, maybe we archive the tools or like the directions of the tools. Um, another question is, I'm curious to know um, um, in the projects that you introduced, especially the one that needs the participation of robustic machines, do you imagine them um, when these research-based pr projects move on from, from, from research-based to more like real practice? Do you imagine them prefabricated at your studio and like fit in a vehicle and transform to the site? Or do you imagine more like corporations like, like you mentioned with the local government to open more robust um, industry um, in the local context? Thank you. I think what we're talking about right now is not a far future. It's not 5,000 years later. We're just talking about what's 10 or 20 years, next 10 or 20 years will happen. So right now, actually, a uh, robotic factory is booming, not just in the architecture discipline. In China especially, I think the central government gave a lot of investment mm -hmm. to sponsor the researchers. Actually, what we are doing right now is 
uh, uh, 10,000 square meter robotic timber structure factories in the, in the construction in Sichuan province. Mm. It's totally supported by the central government because they see what you can do, they mm -hmm. prove you can do it, and they will invest in it. So that is a good time for us. It's not just the imagination. I hope maybe next time I can make a lecture here, I will show you a robotic factory, what we, we as a designer to participate in the process to, to shaping the future industry. I think that's not the factory belong to anyone. It's be, that is the, the knowledge is inventing by us, it's making by us. So I think uh, uh, what my interest actually is spreading out these kind of things to teaching them not just as a secret or the authorship not just belong to me, mm -hmm. I think it belongs to the whole society. That's why um, in the road district, I'm quite interested right now doing a lot of road district project. We right. teach the local uh, industry and the local people to use these kind of things because some young generation, if they go to university learning how to use computer, they can learn how to use robotics. Mm -hmm. They don't need learn how to program it. They just can manipulate the, the tools and they can become the workers, robotic workers in the future. That is will be meaningful. What we are learning and research and play our roles in the future is kind of, that could play a leading, leading roles to change the industry. You know, the architecture industry in right now in China is 25% for GDP. I don't know in, in the States. That is quite mm -hmm. as the most important industry in, in China right now. So the future generation, young generation. Mm -hmm. Not everyone go to Columbia, no, not impossible, but some other young generation, if can learn how to use robotics, you can imagine how the industry will change the world, how the industry will change the future. So as a designer, we can put forward the building as an example, as a new uh, demo to the public. We can do this, and this could be better and totally different to, to that. Mm -hmm. So maybe that will be meaningful for what we're doing right now. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. One more. Hi, thank you for the lecture. Um, I, I had a question um, with respect to this conversation of uh, visualization, representation, simulation, etc. It seems like um, the work that you present is largely in the category, let's say, of um, visualization and simulation, and less maybe, as you alluded to at the beginning, in, in what we conventionally understand as representation. And I wonder what sorts of materials you might produce or what motivates the uh, forms before they need to be optimized or before the materials are assigned. So, you know, what motivates a brick sheltering you from the rain or a building in the shape of figure eight, the things that other forms of representation might typically be produced in order to explore prior to the, the optimization of the form through the various technologies um, that you're experimenting with? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. So who is the boss in the design process? If the truth is a box or the designer, the human is a boss. I think I'm talking about the future is not the, I think the past, we all, uh, all of us believing the creative architects can make a fantastic design. Uh, uh, the Prix uh, uh, Prize winner, why he's great? Because he can make the unique cultural and architectural aspects, the, the, the buildings, just by himself. But I think the future is not just by human. It's already coming because the human and the machine, and right now it's like a collaborative partner. So maybe you set up office, your partner in the future could be a robotics, not a human. If you, your partner is strong enough, you can, they, you can do together something different. So the tools is not building, uh, I, I'm talking about some simulation tools. Uh, traditionally, like Arup, this kind of big firm, big, big firm they just post-rationalize the form the architects gave to them. Although they were strong, any Frank Gehry sketch, they can make a building. That's, the, I think, the last generation. But this generation, what they're doing is the structure performance thinking is a very, very early stage. The thinking decision-making process can build into the early decision-making process. That is not just a, a concept form finding. That is one of the 
the things in your mind, if you, this, this kind of uh, logical think, thinking process can, 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 can collaborate with, with your mm -hmm. unrational process. Uh, that's as rational or unrational can collaborate with each other. So how to embrace this kind of new technology is most important. Not to say no to them. I think I, I just say, why not? We, 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 we should collaborate with, with machine. So we can make a different future because that, although at, in the very early stage, conceptual stage, that will totally change the design process. So and also I believe in uh, the parametric is a good tools because the parameters could replace a lot of information. It's not just a geomet geometrical process. There will be a lot of information building this kind of data, this kind of information parameters, which will give the form even more meaning. It's not just for beauty. It's for the aesthetics, for the, uh, for the ethic, for the other meaning, more than geometry meaning in the mm -hmm. design process. So that, that is a total thinking shift and paradigm shift, just, just in the form level. I think it's a uh, workflow can re reshape the design thinking process. But if I could just follow up. I mean, I'm just curious because uh, say a robot doesn't care if a brick is twisted or not. And so what is the form of representation that conveys to somebody that a brick should be twisted before the robot figures out how to twist it most efficiently. <laughs> does that make sense? Like, what's, where's the, how does one represent the irrational within the work, what you're calling the irrational? Mm -hmm. Or does it only come in the final product and you somehow, you know, I think th it seems to, to me that there's a sort of step missing, which is yeah. where the choice is made before it goes into the system. Mm -hmm. And those choices still have to be made outside of the technology because mm -hmm. The robot isn't yet making choices about why we twist bricks. It's only saying how we can best twist the bricks. Let, uh, let me uh, give you an example. Compared to a soldier 1,000 years ago, and the soldiers right now in the war, I think 1,000 years ago without any guns, they just have this kind of knife and this kind of tools. It's just like the sword. And when they're fighting with you, only we can see you and it should be in a certain very close distance we can fight you. But right now, if you have a gun, you're just fighting 100 meters, 200 meters, you're fighting him. So the tools will change in your thinking methodology. The representation tools from the plan section, elevation, astrometrical drawings to the diagrams. I think the diagrams are already a certain kind of visualization analysis process building the diagrams. The diagrams more than the the tradition representing tools. So the, rep the tools always play an important role in the design process. If you can only join the sketch, you're thinking like a sketch drawing process. You can use, uh, use robotics, you're thinking uh, robot and human collaborate process. The tools will change your thinking methodology. I think that is, could not be separate. What is the first? So the truth is a kind of culture. It's kind of thinking, design thinking, building in your body. Great. That's my one last question, right? I was, I was wondering what what what's your thought? What is your thought of what happened with Ron Chomp that uh, Corbusier did in 1950? Uh, which is made, as I understand, designed and composed strictly with pencil and paper, mm -hmm. uh, with none of, obviously, any of the technology even close to what it is today. That was a future of architecture also mm -hmm. that didn't really continue at all. And uh, so I was just wondering, how, does that relate anything to it where it's really, uh, uh, feelings and tone and reasoning of, of what the building was about and for who, the, uh, the people and the religion, of course, and where he, he didn't have uh, any technology to, to came, it all came out of, and you know, there's so many other examples, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Hans Sharon 
to, of course, Mr. Wright, mm -hmm. you know, and all those other sort of guys. <laughs> I think um, What's that architecture not, uh, about that? Uh, if we, I understand what your question, I think not every day we make a revolution. Le Corbusier, I think he's standing at this, uh, just a moment, put forward a new paradigm because that is a paradigm of the thinking methodologies. That's a revolution time. But I think right now is another revolution time because uh, the modernism gave us this kind of autonomous process for the form making is totally different to the classical buildings because that is totally based on new uh, ethics and a new understanding of the logic of the buildings that could be constructed based on certain kind of structure system, certain kind of new materials. You can imagine the, the social production system is totally changed after the World War. It's all because of the new technology at that time was happening. So Le Corbusier is someone who gives us a theory and gives us a practice and showing something important to us. But right now we can think about another revolution is about the information age, the exchange of the information, the change of the tools. The intelligent tools can build us, can make us even more stronger. And the, the customized process, the, the prefab process, totally different to the, the world war after the, the World War II because the world to the industry process is kind of all the components are the same in the prefab industry, but right now we can use robotics to make all the components different, but it could be same efficient. That means the machine age right now is integrated with the information age. That is the, another turning point we are thinking about. We need to rethink about why we make design, how we make design, and the, 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 what's the direction of the, our, our industry we're going. So I think, um, if I understand what your question, I think although the great master, they are great, they are great because of the time, not because of themselves, because they're standing at the right time, put for the right thing, doing the right thing. But right now, if, if we understand what's happening around us, not just in architecture discipline, we should be thinking on what we should teach, what we should learn in our pedagogy system mm -hmm. and in our uh, practice process. Great. Thank you very much for unpacking.